What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and today I was able to go to Google's Pixel event where they revealed a new Pixel and Pixel 2 XL. And I gotta say, after playing around with them for a while today, I'm pretty excited for these phones. And when it comes to specs and software, we're pretty much looking at the same thing, where you're gonna really see a difference is the hardware and design. So first, let's talk about the Pixel 2. The Pixel 2 has a five inch 1080p P OLED display, and needless to say, it looks great. But to be honest, like the iPhone 8, I'm a little disappointed that we don't see an edge to edge display here, since that's been the trend for phones this year. If you want that, you're gonna wanna look at the XL version, but we'll get to that in a second. The display maintains that regular 16 by nine aspect ratio that we're used to seeing, which is a plus for those of you who aren't too fond of the 18 by nine ratio that we've been seeing on a lot of this year's phones. And the design is pretty similar to that of the first Pixel, but I gotta say this one is a lot thinner and quite a bit lighter. Same with the XL. It's a little smaller and no longer has that antenna going through the back, which is a nice touch. Now we've got a couple of different colors and they've got some interesting names. We've got just black, clearly white, and kind of blue, which it is. And I could be wrong, but I think the kind of blue version is exclusive to Verizon customers, since when I tried to get my pre-order in, uh, it was only available with Verizon. But let's talk about that Pixel 2 XL, since that's the one I'm a bit more excited for. The XL has a six inch P OLED Quad HD Plus display, and yes, we have an edge to edge display here. The bezels aren't super thin, they're a little thicker than some of the other phones that we're seeing with this kind of design, but it still gets the job done. Screen looks plenty big. I love that the XL is not over the top flashy, but really good looking in its own right. And speaking of sticking with the trends, the XL will have an 18 by nine aspect ratio, like the LG G6, the LG V30, the Galaxy S8, Note 8, the list goes on. But instead of having the same three color lineup as the regular Pixel, the color offerings we have for the XL are just black, and black and white, which is fitting since both phones come with Android Oreo. And the display has something called a colorizer, which allows you to easily use it even when you're wearing sunglasses and it's VR ready. But now let's talk about some of the things that both the Pixel share that plan to give it an edge over its competition. And both phones have that snappy Snapdragon 835 processor that we've been seeing in most of the flagships this year. So you'll have no problem doing your everyday things. And both phones also happen to be dust and water resistant. And luckily at the event, I was able to play around with that eight megapixel front facing camera, as well as that 12 megapixel rear camera. And I gotta say guys, I was impressed. Google has done it again. They've got awesome cameras in these phones. And with these phones, we're actually seeing features that we're used to seeing on the iPhone. Heck, they even have a straight up portrait mode that gives you that same blurred out background effect, but it's doing it here with a single lens. No dual lens system here, but you're still getting the same effect, uh, which is actually surprisingly good. The quality from the blur effects were actually very impressive. You can actually swipe between the two, see the difference, and it's major. What I'm really liking about the portrait mode here is that it doesn't require a ton of light in order to get the shot off. When I'm using my iPhone, it says, you know, you gotta get more light, you gotta move away from your subject, all this kind of stuff. But when I was using these two phones, I didn't have any messages pop up saying I couldn't get the effect off. It was just snap and go. It was really responsive, really impressive, and it did a great job. You can also take photos with motion, kind of like we have the live photos on the iPhone. So if you're into that, you can do that there. And there's also a cool Google Lens feature that allows you to take a picture that you've already taken, scan it, and it'll let you know exactly what you scanned with a Google search. I personally cannot wait to put this phone through its paces, really test out that camera. Cameras are a big deal for me and I'm really excited the fact that Google can actually pull off something so great with just one lens. And with both phones, we have stereo front facing speakers. Thank you. I love when companies do this because honestly, that's the way it should be. Front facing stereo speakers, no ifs, ands, or buts. And one thing I should know guys is the removal of the headphone jack. Looks like Bluetooth headphones are gonna become more and more prevalent and more and more important. So if you haven't made the jump yet, you probably should soon. But thankfully both have Bluetooth 5.0, so you're gonna get better connectivity, a longer range, uh, you know, we'll start seeing better sound quality, all that kind of stuff. So that's one good thing. And we all know the Google Assistant can do a ton, but I think two of the most noteworthy ways that it's used with the Google Pixel is one with that always on display. And we've seen the always on display with multiple devices that use OLED displays. And what it does is it basically shows you the time, your email, notifications and reminders, all without having to unlock your phone. But now it'll also show you what song is playing in your environment without you having to even ask. And honestly, I think this is amazing. Usually when I'm hearing a song, I'm enjoying it. And then I'm thinking, oh, 
I better find out what song this is. And you gotta fumble and run for your voice assistant and ask it, hey, what song is this? Then it has to listen. It's just too much. With this now, all you gotta do is look down at your phone and it's already telling you what song it is. And all you do is double tap it and you have options to go in and see whether there's a music video, uh, play it from a music streaming service that you may have, and a bunch more. You'll even see lyrics, all kinds of stuff. I honestly think that's a really great feature. It's less work for the user to do and it just gives you the information that you want right when you want it. And that second way is actually activating it by squeezing your phone. Very new way to interact with your phone, but it was oddly satisfying as long as you don't hit the buttons on the sides. I ran into that issue a little bit, but overall, it was a pretty smooth experience. And in terms of battery life, the Pixel 2 is rocking a 2700 milliamp hour battery, while the XL has a 3520 milliamp hour battery, which is really good. One little drawback is the fact that we don't see wireless charging here, but I feel like they made up for that by allowing some insanely fast charging where you get seven hours of usage with just 15 minutes of charging. <laughs> That blew my mind. I mean, he just, they just kind of brushed over that really quickly in the, during the event. And I was just like, wait a minute, seven hours of usage, 15 minutes of charging? That's some next level stuff. And I can't wait to really try that out in the real world. But overall guys, I gotta say, I am extremely excited for both of these phones, especially that Pixel 2 XL. But let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm also gonna have a future video where we go over some of that Google Home stuff that they talked about. Uh, they got some new things there and you guys know that's right up my alley. But that's about it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be the cool guy or girl that gives this video a thumbs up, and I'll catch you in the next one. Till then, it's your average consumer. Peace.